Okay, hello, and welcome to my second attempt to record part one. Um, 20 minutes of recording with no audio, that was certainly very fun. But anyway, in this part I'm going to uh, explain the directory structure, and, um, well, basically we're going to create the entire system. This video might be a little bit too long, but that's because there's no sort of natural place for it to split, and I think you can manage to watch a 20 minute video. So. Uh, what we have is this folder, and this is sort of the root of our site. Um, so we have this single check.php page, and this is to sort of simulate a page in the admin area of your system um, that will um, sort of t well tell the admin of the site whether or not they need to update the software. Um, then we have this core folder, which contains like the entire back end of the system, if you like. Um, it has this init.inc.php file. Uh, and this is the file that sort of does everything that needs to be done on all pages. So it will start the session if necessary, do something with output buffering if you want to do that, um, set up any session handlers, error logging, that kind of thing. Um, maybe check usernames, validate that the user is allowed to be on the page that they're requesting. Um, because that check could obviously be done on all the pages, but it could also be put in this init file. So that's kind of the point of it. Uh, in this folder, we have this ink folder, um, and in there, there will be any sort of backend files that you need. So, any files that define various functions, various classes, that kind of thing, backend only type stuff. And these files are never di uh, never going to be accessed directly by the browser, uh, only sort of included and used by the various pages. So, um, in this file folder, by the way, we have one file at the moment version.ink.php. Um, and this is because we're only creating like the version checking part of this fake system. We're going to be creating a whole CMS type thing. So that's basically that. Um, so going back to the root of our folder, our root of our system, sorry. Root of our folder doesn't really make much sense. Um, this newest version, .txt, uh, this is the file that contains the uh, actual latest version number. Uh, as you can see at the moment, I've set it to 5.3.6. If I just open this up, if I just open this up in the correct f uh, window, um, okay, I've got it anyway. Um, you can see that I've set it to 5.3.6, um, and this file would not be distributed with your system. This would be kept on your server, your website. So we're going to be accessing it via like HTTP as a web, you know, URL. So that's basically it. Um, if we, oh, just notice that I've removed all the PHP code. So we're going to be starting completely from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is the init file. So let's go to the init file. And what we're going to do first is create a new variable called path. And this will contain the full path to the uh, current folder. And we get that by using the dir name function on the file constant. Uh, just notice, by the way, that this is two underscores here two underscores here, so two before and two after, not one. That's been a bit of a common problem on the forums. Forum, I've only got one. Um, and this this file constant uh, contains the value, uh, a string as a value, which is the full server path, so starting with like and ending in the file name, so it's the full server path to the current script where you use it sort of regardless of if it's being included or anything like that. Uh, and then the dir name function will just take the directory part of that and sort of ignore any file names. So then we end up with the full server path to the core folder. So then we can use that to include our files, except we will spell include correctly. There we go. Um, the reason we do that, by the way, is just so that if we ever include this init file from a different location, other than doing like core slash init, if we just were in the core folder and we included it, it would still work. So, it can still include the correct files. By using the full path, we can do that. So, what we're including is the path variable slash inc slash version dot inc dot php. phpo. Um, and this will just include that file. Uh, the final thing we need to do in this init file, we're going to do at the top, and that is we're going to define a constant. Constants are quite a lot like variables, except they're defined, given a value, that is, by using this define function. 
which takes two parameters. The first one is the string name of the constant, which we're going to set to current version. By convention, they're all in uppercase. I'm not really sure why. It's just sort of tradition, I guess. Um, so I've usually done that. They don't have to be. And the second parameter of this function is the value. So just for testing, we can set this to 4.0.0. .0 .0. Um, it might be sort of sensible to have this in a separate file that's easy to change, but the init file is a good place for it. So that's basically it for the init file. Um, and the next thing we need to do is work on the backend version.inc.php, um, and this will um, define the various functions that we need to use on the check page. So to do that, we can go to the backend file, like so, and create the functions. So the first function we need is one that will fetch the latest version number from the address. So what we're going to do is create a new function. It's going to be called fetch latest version. I'm not going to take any parameters. It's just going to return something. And we want to get the contents of a URL. And we can do that using the file get contents uh, contents function. Uh, and ordinarily you would pass in a file name like file.txt here but something that you something else that you can do is use a URL so you could do for example Google and what this would do is get the sort of source so if you go to Google right click view page source or whatever browser whatever your browser says to view the page source uh, that would be downloaded and returned as a result of this function call here Obviously we don't want the source of Google, we want the text file that we, uh, well I showed you a minute ago. And just to save me having to type out a complicated URL, I'll just copy and paste this from over there, like so. Uh, obviously this would be a generally a lot shorter, like it would be yoursite.com slash version.txt. Uh, it could also be dynamic, it doesn't have to be a text file. Um, and then this will get the contents of that file, so this will now return this string here and then we just want our function to return it so we just literally add return beforehand uh, and then we just need to quickly comment what this function does so it fetches um, fetches the latest latest version from the server server from there we go so that's that function created. That's sort of the only awkward part of this, really. And then after that function, we want another function, which will check um, uh, check the current version against this version. I'm going to call this function is latest version. Again, it's not going to take any parameters because we have access to all we need. The function above can be used to get the latest version, and the current version constant can be used to get the current version. So what we want to do first is get the latest version so that we can compare it with our um, current version. So we're going to do that by defining a new variable called latest and setting this equal to fetch latest version. And this obviously is just the function that we defined above. So after that, now we've got the latest version, we can compare it to our current version using the PHP version compare function and you just use this in an if statement like so so if version compare except we spell compare right uh, this function takes three parameters the first one is a version number the second one is another version number and the third one is the operation that you want to do so by operation or operator I mean like say if you wanted to just check a simple mathematical thing like if 6 is less than 7, the operator is this less than symbol here. So this function kind of takes it, takes its parameters in the wrong order. Um, I think by default it checks if they're equal, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, so to check if 6 is less than 7 you do this, but to check a version number you have to use this version compare function. So say if you wanted to check if 6 was less than 7 with the ver version compare function, you would do 6 as a string, 7 as a string and the less than symbol as a string which is the operator. So you can see that what used to be here has been moved 
to the end. Don't know how well that worked. Uh, so it's pretty simple, really. Um, and obviously, these don't have to be just numbers. They can be like 6.4.7. Point infinite numbers. Uh, you can also use strings like dev, and I think dev is considered greater than any other string. Uh, the version php.net slash version compare page has all the information on this. But obviously we don't want to use just static numbers here, we want to use our actual versions. So we want to use the first version as the current version constant, and the second version as the latest. And what this is doing going back to this simple analogy thing up here, is checking, it's not an analogy, is it the current version is less than latest. But, although obviously that won't work because numbers can't have more than one decimal place, decimal point, by sort of, you know, just how maths works. Um, so you have to use this version compare function. So we don't need that anymore, that's explained sufficiently. So if um, the version, our current version is less than the latest version, we want to return the latest version because then we can use that to show a message saying please upgrade to version number and if it's not so that means if the, if it's not it means that our version is either greater than which would be a bit weird or equal to the latest version which is more likely and we just want to return true because is latest version checking it here yes it is so now that's that function complete, we just need to quickly comment what it does. So checks the current version against the one from the server. There we go, that should do. And I think that's all spelled right. Not really important. Well, I think it is. It's impressive. <laughs> um, so that's our backend file complete. Um, and something that would be pretty sensible to do at this time would be to check for syntax. We can do that because the init file includes this version file and the uh, check file includes the init file, which I believe I showed you. So, going back to this, oh, whoops, anyway, ignore that. Um, now we have um, a blank page, which is good. No errors means that nothing has gone wrong, so that's kind of good. Well, it's very good. Um, so, anyway going back to our page, what we actually want to do now is just create a little message to say hello, you need to update, or hello, you don't need to update. Maybe not hello, that's a bit odd. Anyway, we can do that in this block here by just doing if is latest version not equal to true, because that'll mean that they haven't got the latest version, because remember the function returned true if they had. So if they haven't, we can just echo a message saying, echo, a new version is available. And obviously you could have like a nicer set of instructions, like you could link them to the download, or maybe have it auto-download if you're feeling clever. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. And if we go back to our page now, hit reload. Uh, I spelled version wrong, that's encouraging. Uh, version. There we go, fixed, ignore that. A new version is available. So that means that our version defined here, 4.0.0, .0 is less than 5.3.6. If I change our version in the init file to say 6, which is greater than it, hit reload, oops, message goes away. If we set it to the actual current version, 5.3.6, still no message because we're on the latest version, but 5.3.5 message appears. So hopefully you can see how this sort of works now, how version numbers work anyway. Um, PHP.net slash version compare, just again, um, that has plenty of information on the version compare function. Uh, anyway, the next thing we need to do, just very briefly, is because we had the function return the um, current version number, if uh, if uh, version was outdated or whatever. If our version is less than the current version, it returns the current version. We can now use that to show a message, show the actual, like you can update to this version here. So we're just going to say a new version, whatever, is available. So going back to our code, we can do this very simply by defining a new variable up here called version, and this is equal to the isLatestVersion function. 
and this has to be in brackets, otherwise it'll not work, essentially anyway. Um, and what this will do is set the version variable equal to the result of is latest version. So that will either be true if it is the latest version, or it'll be a string version number if it's not. And then here a new version is available. We can just do a new version uh, and then the version number, like so, is available. Hit reload, a new version 5.3.6 is available. Um, obviously this is that space I was talking about here. Um, if you notice in our text file, we don't have that space. This is literally it. You know, control A, that's it. Um, so the, res the way to fix that is in our function here, fetch latest version. Instead of returning the entire string, we return trim the entire string. And what the tr uh, trim function does is uh, strips any white space from the end or the start of a string. So you can demonstrate that just by reloading the page. You see that that highlighted space has now gone because the space was obviously white space, it's been removed. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Obviously, you can add a sort of else condition, which I demonstrated in the uh, first part. So you do else echo you have the latest version. Ooh, smiley face. Yay. So that's good. Uh, obviously, we don't at the moment, but if I just go to my init file and set this back to 5.3.6, hit the reload, you now have the latest version. So that's basically it. Hopefully this was useful. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, join me in whatever comes after this. If you want to, obviously.